It really felt like pulling a Captain Planet on this one, with the combined power of declarative code, RxJS, signals, functional route guards, the inject function, and even a little cheeky but questionable usage of the new defer syntax. So I'll show you that one at the end. This app has the basic authentication stuff you would want. I can create an account, log out, log in. If I am logged out and try to access the logged in view, I'll get kicked back to the login page. And if I'm already authenticated and load into the login page, it will automatically redirect me to the logged in view. The general idea here is to show how authentication can be integrated with the RxJS and signal state management approach I've been talking about lately. I'll link to a separate video on that if you want more details, but the basic idea is that we use RxJS observable streams to represent and manipulate our sources of data and events. And then we have a subscribe or reducer step that takes values from those streams and sets them in a state signal. This gives us the best of both worlds, RxJS for events and signals for state. And it circumvents a lot of the complexity of writing declarative code with RxJS. This particular implementation is built on top of Firebase, but most of the concepts I'm going to be showing you can be applied generally to other backends and authentication solutions as well. Okay, to kick things off, I've got some injection tokens defined in my app config file. This particular step is Firebase specific, so I'll link to another video I have on this, but these injection tokens will also handle automatically connecting to local emulators or the actual production authentication service and database, depending on the environment. Wherever I need access to Firebase authentication or the Firestore database throughout my app, I can just inject these tokens. So now let's take a look at the auth service I've created. And as you can see, I'm utilizing that injection token here. The only source of data we have for this service is this user source, which is an observable stream of the auth state from Firebase. This will emit either null or the user object, depending on whether the user is authenticated or not. Our user state will initially be undefined in our signal. And then when our user source emits, the state signal will be set with either the user, meaning they are authenticated as that user, or null, meaning they are not authenticated. We can now use this user signal anywhere in our app and react to it changing. There are also a few methods defined in here as well. These handle converting the promises returned from the Firebase functions like sign in with email and password to observable streams. This allows us to integrate Firebase with this whole reactive declarative paradigm much more easily. So let's go see where those streams are used. We will start with the service for our register smart component. This service also follows the same general state management approach. This time we have a create user source that we can next with credentials when we want to attempt to create a new user. If we take a peek at the template for the register component, we can see this is done when the app register form emits. What happens when this create user source is nexted is that it triggers this user created source, which is derived from it. It takes the credentials and returns a new observable stream from that create account method we just looked at in the auth service. It passes the credentials to it and it gets a stream representing that account creation as a response. If this resulting stream emits without erroring, we know the creation of the user has been successful. We don't actually have to even do anything with the returned value. We just set the state signal to indicate that it was successful. Remember that we have this auth state stream in the auth service. When we create a user, that auth state is going to emit the new authenticated user without our having to do anything manually. We just trigger the registration and the auth state updates automatically. Anything in our application watching the user from the auth state can also react automatically without our manual intervention. For example, in our register component, we also have this effect watching the user from the auth state signal. This will handle automatically redirecting to the logged in view once the user has been successfully created. Perhaps this is a good example of the niceness of reactive and declarative code. There is generally no manual imperative steps or updating things or refreshing things. We can just make things happen and everything else just automatically reacts if it needs to. That's the declarative approach in a nutshell. Everything knows what it is and how to calculate itself. It doesn't need to imperatively be told what it is and when to update. As well as creating a new account, we also need to be able to log in with an existing account, which is what the login service handles. The login service is pretty much exactly the same thing in concept to the register service. Again, we just trigger a login using Firebase, the auth state stream will update automatically, and the application will react appropriately by triggering a redirect to the logged in view. Logging out is also quite easy. We just trigger the logout method we saw earlier, which calls the Firebase signout function. 
Again, we don't need to handle anything here because we have this auth state stream that reacts to the auth state changing automatically. We just have an effect that watches for an unauthenticated user and auto redirects back to the login page when that happens. We've still got plenty more to discuss, but if you are enjoying this so far, please consider dropping a like or subscribe. It really helps to spread the video. So what is particularly interesting is handling what happens in the message service when we log back in. Again, the message service looks pretty similar to the rest of the services. This one is responsible for adding and pulling in message data from the Firestore database. For example, we have this add source that can be nexted with a message. When this happens, we switch to the observable stream returned by this add message function, which is again just passing data through to the appropriate Firebase function. The interesting part is what is happening in this messages source. The basic idea is simple enough. It is just a stream of messages from the messages collection in the Firestore database. Anytime this stream emits, our state signal will be updated with the new messages. But what happens when the user logs out is that they no longer have permission to access that database and this stream will error. Once an observable stream errors, it is finished. And that means that even when the user logs in again, they will no longer be able to get messages because this stream will be broken. Now, keeping in line with our ideals of wanting everything to just happen automatically, we don't really want to add some sort of special imperative handling for recreating this stream on login. The handling of this situation should be built into the source itself. So to solve this, we add the retry operator and configure the delay option so that whenever the user from our auth state is set to a valid user, it will restart this stream. Again, now this all happens automatically. The stream will break if the user logs out because it will cause an unauthorized error. But as soon as the user in our auth server state signal becomes valid again, it will immediately and automatically restart this stream. Okay, so now let's discuss that defer thing. Generally speaking, the new defer control flow syntax is used for lazy loading components within a template. However, I came up with a way to use this to solve a problem I had, which feels like a bit of an abuse of the idea, but I think it also solves the issue quite cleanly. Let's take a look at the problem. If we have this auth situation, we typically want authorized users to be automatically taken into the app, and we want unauthorized users to be kicked out of the app. To handle kicking users out, I use the more typical approach of a route guard. You can see this home route is protected by this authentication guard. It will allow access to the route if there is a valid user, otherwise it will redirect back to the login page. If an authenticated user loads up the login page, which they might do when revisiting the application after having already logged in, I want to redirect them to the login view like this. Again, I could use a route guard here, but there is a bit of a downside to that. I don't know if a user is authenticated or not until the auth state stream from Firebase emits its first value, which is going to take some small amount of time. That means that the user isn't going to see anything until that happens if I use a route guard. If that only takes 10, 20 or 50 milliseconds, it probably isn't going to be a big deal, but longer wait times will start to become noticeable. Instead, what I decided to do was load up the login page immediately. I display this spinner until the auth state emits its first value and then either show the login form or if the user is already authenticated, this effect will handle automatically redirecting them to the logged in view. The problem with this is that it creates this brief flickering of the login form. Since the display of the login form and the redirect are controlled by the same condition, there is a tiny fraction of time before the redirect happens where we can see the login form flicker into existence and then it is gone. It just looks a little bit janky. So what I did was use defer to delay the display of the login form. Once this condition passes, the defer will be triggered and it will then wait some small amount of time before loading and displaying the login form. But by that time, the redirect will have finished so we never see the login form flashing in. If the user isn't authenticated, then the form just appears normally after the short delay. This does not increase actual performance in any way, but it may lead to better perceived performance as having things happen, for example, a page popping up and a spinner displaying, makes things feel faster than just waiting the same amount of time staring at a blank page. I threw this up on Twitter to mixed reactions. I'm not 100% sure it's a good idea yet, but so far I still like it. So let me know what you think about the defer thing or anything I've shown in the video. Uh, you can find the full source code in the description. If you found any of this interesting, please consider a like or subscribe before you go. And I hope to see you back here for the next video.